to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung, and we're going to take a look at EIGRP and how it works with three routers and with multiple paths to one destination. And we're specifically, we're going to take a look at the show IP route command, and we're also going to look at the database of EIGRP, the topology database, and see what numbers we can find and the settings that we could change in there. All right, so we're dealing with practice topology 5B, three routers in a triangle. Our IP addresses are already typed in and my routers are already up. So first of all, we want to start EIGRP on all three routers. Very simple. Go to router one, enable ConfT, router EIGRP one, no auto, and throw everything into EIGRP. Very simple stuff. Gonna go over to router two, drag that in here. Enable ConfT, same deal. You could have done this in Notepad if you wanted to. No auto, network, all zeros, all zeros. Life is good. And we have we have a JSON C come up, that's good. And we go to router three, ConfT, router EIGRP, no auto, and network of all zeros. Life is good. We should have connectivity to the whole deal. So if I ping all ones, I have a success. If I have pinged all twos, I have a success right there. Okay, so I'm in router three. Actually, yeah, I'll do router three. I'm gonna drag my other two windows out. So if you look at this diagram, router three is in the bottom right-hand corner of this triangle right here. Router one is at the left and router two is at the top. So if we're looking at router two, router two's loopback, we actually have two ways of getting there from router three. We've got the shorter way, which is out fast ethernet zero zero. We've got this way. And we've got the long way around, which is through router one. We go to router three and we know that we could ping all two. So we're, we can definitely hit that loopback. If we do a trace to all twos, you can see we've got a trace and the first hop is, let's see here, 10.10.23.2, 10.10.23.2, which is this side of the link. So that's good, that's pretty good. Let's do the trace from the source of loopback zero. Let's see if it's any different. So what we're doing is we are flinging it to router two from a source of loopback zero, which is over here. Because normally what's going to happen if we do a regular trace route, it's probably going to chuck it out the closest interface here. But you could see from our trace route that the result was the same. We're hitting 10.10.23.2 first. All right, so life is good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to router 2. I'm going to shut down the fast 01 interface. So interface fast 01. We'll do a shut. So that sucker is down. Go over to router three. We'll ping, or actually, yeah, let's ping first. Whoa. Ping of all twos. I still have a ping, so that's good. But where is it going? So we'll do a trace route of all twos. And you can see now it is different because now we are hitting the first hop of 10, 10, 13, 1 which is the fast 01 side of router one. We're taking the long way around, so going out our fast ethernet 01, so going out the left side, going through router one, and going up towards router two. So that's pretty cool. So we're going, going the long way around. EIGRP converged very fast, so that's pretty nice. So we're gonna go back to router two. Let's do the up arrow. Let's no shut that, we'll bring it back up. Go back down to router three. Let's see if it converged. We'll trace to all twos. And looks like we've already converged. So 10, 10, 23, two, we are now back going towards 10, 10, 23, two right here. So that's pretty nice. Okay, so we have a functioning EIGRP network. Let's see how our IP routing table looks like. Show IP route. And we have lots of D routes. The one we're interested in is going to the all two. So the loopback of router two, we've got that. And you could see right there that we can get there through 10, 10, 23, two. We don't see the other option here. 
And that's because in the routing table, it's only showing the best option. So we can get to 10, uh, 2, 2, 2, all twos, 2, 2, 2, 2, through 10, 10, 23, 2. So it's going up the right side of the triangle. What you see here, the 90 is the administrative distance, and the second number here, 409,600, that is the EIHRP insane metric. Very big numbers, very big. And you could probably read your book or surf the internet to get the whole metric. Uh, I'm not going to discuss it here. Okay, so we've got that. Let's see if there's a way to find out all the available paths in EIRP. And you can see here, if you were eagle-eyed, you could see we've got a route down here, 10, 10, 12, 0. 10, 10, 12, 0, we've got two ways of getting there. So you could see that 10, 10, 12, 0, 10, 10, 12, 0 is this link right here. And the reason we are getting two options of getting there is because we can actually get there through the right side or the bottom. They're equal paths going to the same link because this is a, a triangle. It's one shot out here and one shot out here. And you can see that by going to your routing table. We can get to that link. We have the same administrative distance. We have the same metric, which is 307200. And we can go either way, 10101032 or 101031. That's pretty interesting. Just for kicks, let's trace 10, 10, 12, 1. So we can go there, and you can see here, on this particular trace route, we went through 10, 10, 23, 2. Let's hit the up arrow again. We'll trace route again. And notice this time, our trace route went a different way. It's load balancing. You can see here, 10, 10, 13, 1 is the next hop for this. And if I hit the up arrow and trace it again, I should be back to 10, 10, 23, 2. Okay, so do one trace, it flies out this way. I did another trace, it flies through the bottom route. So that's pretty cool. Okay, now we're going to go back to router 3. Let's, instead of show IP route, let's do a show IP EIRP topology. Show IP EIRP topology. You can see here that we've got P routes, which are passive. That's good. That's not bad. It's exactly what we want. And to get to where we got here, 10, 10, 12, 0, that link right there, we've got two options. You could also see here that for the all twos, we have a single option, 10, 10, 23, 2, which is the right side of the triangle. Notice that it is not showing us this link down here as an option. And the reason for that is basically the metric is too large. Too large. But if we shut down the interface again like we did in a couple minutes ago, we go to router 2. Let's go to router 2 right here. We'll hit the up arrow a couple times, get to shut, enter, and you can see interface is down. See ya. Go back to router 3. And just remember here, that's how it looked before we did the shutdown via 10.10.23.2. Now if I hit the up arrow show IP EIRP topology, you can see that has changed right there. And plus our metric is different. 409,600, 435,200. If I scroll up to what it was before, you could see what it was before was that. 409,600 and 128,256. Wow, look at that. So what it's telling us is this is a much worse metric. But since it's our only option, we're going to take it. All right. So that's how it looks in the IP EIGP topology table. All right. Let's see if we can change these numbers in the topology table and also in the IP routing table. I'm going to bring that interface back up on router 2. No shut it. And let's go into the interface. I'm going to drag router 3 out of the way. Let's see if we can change. We'll go on fast 01 of router 2. Interface fast 01. 
and we'll change the bandwidth command. We'll change it to one kilobit a second. Bandwidth of one. Wow, that's gonna be slow. Go over to router three. So router three, we've got our show IP route. Let's see that, show IP route. Looking at the all two network here. So to get to that loop back, okay, it looks like the same, not too bad. If I ping all twos, got a ping. If I trace all twos, we're still going out the same way. Hmm, okay. So from router 3's perspective, everything looks pretty much the same. Show IP, ERGP, topology. Everything looks good from router 3's perspective. Let's see how it looks on router 2's perspective. Go to router 2, show IP route. And for us to get to all 3's, what do we got here? It's saying that to get to all 3's, we're actually going to use 10, 10, 12, 1. Hmm. Let's take a look at that. 10, 10, 12, 1 is this way. 10, 10, 12, 1 is this side. So to get to all threes, we're going to fling around to the left side and go through the bottom, taking the long way out. Now, why is that? The reason is it's because we changed the bandwidth of fast zero 1 to 1 kilobit a second. So router 2 and EIDRP, they're smart enough to realize that, hey, this link is really slow. I'm going to go the long way around. And that's exactly what it's doing. We could trace it, trace of all threes, Source, loopback zero. Didn't really need the loopback zero, but I just threw it in there for kicks. And you can see it comes around the left side and the bottom. Let's see how the EIGP topology table looks. Show IP EIGP topology. And you can see there to get to all threes, I've got uh, two routes. <laughs> we got the route. Through fast zero zero, uh, you know, somewhat you know, 435,000, 409,000, not too bad. But if I go out fast zero one, you look at that. That's uh, an incomprehensible number. Just a huge, huge number. And it's basically saying, no, I don't want to go through there. Life, you know, that's going to be very, very slow. And I would prefer not to use that. Let's just do a final verification, show IP route. And you can see to get to all threes, we are using the 12, 10, 10, 12, 1 network. It's pretty nice. All right, so that was a quick and easy view of multi-route EIGRP. Just taking a look at what happens when you down an interface, seeing how it converges, and then changing the bandwidth of an interface just to see how EIGRP metrics change. And you could definitely see through the routing table and also through the IP EIGRP topology table that when you change the bandwidth, numbers can get very big. Great, well that was another Router Gods video. Thanks for watching.